Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this Sustainable Food Cities webinar about the Veg Power advertising campaign. My name is Sofia Parente. I am the Sustainable Food Cities campaigns coordinator. Before we start, I would like to take you through a few housekeeping points. It won't take very long. Um, first point I would like to make is that this webinar, it's being recorded. So the presentations and recording will be emailed to you after this webinar, and they'll also be available online. Uh, you can ask questions, uh, share your experiences, your ideas. You can share web links in the chat box on the left hand side of your screen. And we will have time at the end of the presentations to answer your questions. But if we run out of time, we will still answer them offline and share the written answers with you. If you're experiencing technical issues, um, please let me know on the chat um, box. Try to log out and join the webinar again. Uh, use Chrome, that usually sorts things out. Um, so that is pretty much it. So um, getting the webinar started. For those who don't know who we are, Sustainable Food Cities is a movement of nearly 60 towns, cities, boroughs and counties from Aberdeen to Plymouth that share the same approach for transforming food and food um, culture. The Sustainable Food Cities approach is about reshaping a local area through the lens of good food. And the approach is through the what we call the three P's. The first P is for partnership establishing an effective cross-sector food partnership of key stakeholders, and this usually involves public agencies, businesses, NGOs, academics, etc. The second piece for policy, and uh, it's incorporating healthy and sustainable food into local policy, strategy, and planning. And the, three P, the th third P is for putting good food as the norm, the developing and delivering a food strategy and action plan to tackle the key food challenges in the local area. And Sustainable Food Cities, it's a partnership of three organizations, Sustain, Soil Association and Food Matters, who support this growing network with advice, with a program of awards, with grants, uh, with feature campaigns, workshops, events, with guides and resources and much, much more. And in developing their program, we encourage local areas to think about food across uh, these, these six key areas. And you can see them on their screen, so I won't go into, into depth uh, into each one of them. But this approach is a tried and tested model for driving positive change. It's all about connecting stakeholders that are working on the good food agenda. And you'll see later on when you hear uh, Abby Morden from Glasgow, how the partnership approach worked well to ensure that all the different stakeholders around the city tapped into the Veg Power campaign, from the school service in the council to, to all the community groups in the city. And this happens across all the, the key issues from tackling food poverty Poverty to transforming catering and procurement, for example. So if your city or local area is not yet a member of Sustainable Food Cities, uh, please get in touch if you want to know more about the benefits of and becoming a member. And the reason why we're, we're so interested in the Veg Power advertising campaign uh, and we're inviting everyone to get involved is because we run the Veg Cities campaign. Uh, this is one of the feature campaigns of Sustainable Food Cities by a food and farming charity Sustain in partnership with the wider Peace Please initiative. And the aim of the campaign is to increase the availability and consumption of veg. 22 different cities and other local areas are already involved. And um, you can see here where they are in the map. And over the last few months, um, we, we had a few successes and we, we've had 400, almost 400 different organizations taking action on veg. And this ranges from local authorities to restaurants and community groups. Um, 130 people were reached out directly through activities such as talks, workshops, school assemblies, food waste reduction activities. Um, we had hundreds of different initiatives to monitor and reduce food waste um, and collectively um, 
we achieved almost five and a half million additional portions of veg being served by caterers in schools and restaurants. Um, thousands of people were trained in food growing and uh, or cooking with vegetables. And 22 new veg stalls were installed in, in cities around the UK. Uh, so a plethora of activity. So if your city or local area wants to get involved in the Veg Cities campaign, get in touch. It's easy to join the campaign and we have tools and resources available for you to help your campaign locally. What we do is we also coordinate action at the national level. And next year, we want to do more to ensure more local and seasonal veg in catering and procurement and more vegetables grown locally in community and market gardens. So we'll be coordinating action around these areas. So do get in touch if your city or local area wants to get involved um, in the campaign. Um, but we're here to hear about uh, veg power and how you can get involved. Um, so I'm going to pass on to, to Dan Parker, who, who is going to take us through um, what happened uh, earlier this year, plans for 2010-20 and, and resources that will be available to, to everyone who wants to get involved. Uh, we'll have uh, also a case study from Glasgow and Abby Morden from the Glasgow Community Food Network is going to talk about their experience uh, and we're going to have some questions and answers after that. So I do encourage you to use the attendee chat box at the left-hand side of your screen. Leave your ideas, leave your contributions, leave your questions, and we'll address them later on. So, Dan, it's all yours. Uh, hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, very good. good. Thank you. Excellent. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well. I see lots of familiar names on there. So hello to all you guys. Um, Press some buttons here. Uh, I'm going to go through three things during the course of the next half an hour or so, which is what we did this year with Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign, what we've got lined up for next year, and what we're going to be doing in schools as part of that campaign next year. Right. Uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. I'm not quite getting the slide that I expect. Give me a moment. Right, so the Eat Them, Defeat Them campaign, as you know, it went out uh, beginning of this year, uh, went out on 25th of January and got a lot of publicity and a lot of coverage with support from ITV. <clears throat> they gave us about two million pounds worth of free advertising, um, which was just a little bit short of 2000 advertising spots, included many on some of the most popular shows in the country. Um, we reached 38.2 million people uh, via the TV advertising. And the survey work we did afterwards showed that 65% of parents were cool seeing the ad and 44% of children were cool seeing the ad. So we got pretty good coverage. We also did some survey work around how they felt about the advert. And we found that 69% of kids liked the advert, 57% thought it made vegetables more fun. And 42% said it made vegetables, uh, they'd want to eat more vegetables. Now, it's very hard for us to know are those are good numbers or bad numbers. I know if I was you know, running a marketing campaign for a conventional food brand, those would be fabulous numbers. Um, I think they, they're good and, and exciting numbers. What we also got from the partnership with ITV was over five hours of editorial support on some of their biggest shows. So we had, we had Hugh on Good Morning Britain. We had Loose Women talking about it, Lorraine talking about it. We had the, 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 the poster site here on, on Coronation Street, and then we had some of the, the biggest stars coming out to support um, uh, the campaign. Um, Sophia is now going to play you a couple of videos in a completely seamless fashion. Here we go. Over to you, Sophia. We're coming to get you, Veg. They're surrounding us. Come on, guys. Together, we've got to eat them to defeat them. Boys and girls, the veg are coming. And we need your help. All you've got to do is eat them to the feed them. So these these spots are, uh, thank you very much, by, by the way, Sophia. That was fantastically seamless. Um, th these spots were 
prime time Saturday night, 11 million viewers during The Voice, during Britain's Got Talent, to camera from from superstar celebrities like Will I Am and Anton Deck, which is just awesome sort of money can't buy coverage for the campaign and and what we heard back from a lot of schools and a lot of kids was it was great to be doing something in schools that Ant and Deck were doing on a Saturday night. Um, Sophia, I've, I've now lost the presentation and can't see it and can't navigate it, by the way. Is there any chance we can bring it back up? I'm, I'm working on it. I've, You're working I can't on it. see it. <laughs> I, will, I will try and remember what comes next and see if I can talk through it in, in a completely seamless fashion. Um, and uh, I will work as quick as I can to get it back up. Right. Uh, can I remember the order of my slides? Here we go. Right. So um, as well as getting all that kind of, you know, that fabulous coverage on telly, we then got loads of other people give us free stuff. So we got View and Odeon Cinemas gave us free advertising in their cinemas during half term, uh, which is when the Lego 3, Lego 2, uh, Lego movie and How to Train Your Dragon movie are out. And we reached another 1.8 million people who went and saw those movies to that freebie that we got there we got um several of the national newspapers the metro the telegraph and the guardian gave us free advertising which reaches another 4.7 million people obviously more parents we formed a partnership with the beano who created lots of fantastic online games uh like was one called fork Knight, which was you know all kind of veggie related games and silliness which takes us to about another 350,000 uk based primary school age kids um so we you know a, a lot of additional coverage so we also got a cover wrap to uh, a newspaper called first news which is read by uh seven to 14 year olds it goes out to about about two million readership and bird's eye funded a cover wrap of that so a massive amount of free media then on top of that we got uh we had about eight of the big outdoor poster companies give us free space and we got various other bits of free space from various local authorities and we ended up with um, they measure poster sites in what's called impact so we got 63 million impacts which means 63 million times somebody walked past one of our posters which is sounds incredible right? all in all this media campaign has a value somewhere is about five five and a half million pounds worth of free media that we managed to to scrounge together for the campaign How's it going, Sophia? Okay, just give me a moment. I'm going to see if I can open up my presentation. Working, working, working on, on it. it. We'll I get there. can't see it. We will get there. How is sound? I, uh, yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me, and we'll just assume nobody else. Can you all hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us okay. This is like doing YouTube. Click like the video if you can hear us okay. Well, people can still hear you, Dan. So uh, if you can, remember the order of the presentation. Um, keep yeah, talking we'll do, and we'll I'm get it back up. I'm going to open it up on my other computer. Hold on half a second and then I can remember what comes next. Right. Yeah. So a, a huge amount of free media. On top of that, we got support from... Uh, 11 supermarkets, so, you know, Alda, Asdi, Co-op, Iceland, Lidl, Marks & Spencers, Morrison's, Ocado, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, and Waitrose. So a kind of high 90% market share of the grocery market. They all came in and supported us. And along with Birdseye, they gave us money to help pay for all the, the assets that we produced uh, and to fund the cost of filming the advert. And a lot of the supermarkets also then deployed in store and online and to varying degrees help support the campaign and, and maybe try and make veggies more accessible, maybe more affordable. On top of that, we created a reward chart and sticker pack, uh, which went out to, we produced 300,000 of those in print, which went out through packs in primary school bags. Uh, I know there's a few people here whose cities, you know, we've got lots in Edinburgh and Glasgow and, and Brighton and lots of different cities had these packs 300,000 kids which we know work very very well from the feedback we've had in homes and in motivating kids to to, uh, to eat more veg uh, and then we also distributed more of the packs online and you know, the, a copy of the reward chart one in every copy of the Beano and we maybe got and possibly got as many as half a million of these reward charts out into the hands of kids okay. the uh, the response 
on social media was absolutely one of the most exciting things. I don't know how many of you guys followed it. I know quite a few of you guys contributed to it. So thank you for that. But we, social media is quite hard to measure exactly, but the, the experts we've been working with, their estimation is that we probably reached about 3 million people on social media, uh, particularly Twitter, which means, you know, we're mostly talking to parents. But the important thing here is that it um, the social media creates a kind of, um, an affirmation process for the parents. It makes them feel like they're part of a bigger thing and that everybody else is doing it and they feel more confident doing it. And, and when it comes to getting these into your kids, confidence is an important issue with parents. And so the, the social media really kind of reinforces that for them if it doesn't necessarily reach the kids directly. The As part of the process, we had a thing called Veg of the Week. And so Veg of the Week ran for 10 weeks and we had a featured vegetable. And uh, what happened during each of those weeks is that we had chefs go up on social media. So we had Jamie Oliver and Prue Leith and Tom Carriage, Hugh Funny Whittestall, Otto Lenghi. I mean, just masses and masses and masses of really great chefs. And they went up on social and they did recipes and ideas and fun stuff around that week's featured veg. The supermarkets then promoted it, gave it better positions, sometimes gave it better prices to try and make it an easier choice for people. The schools then came in and promoted them. The caterers went to work in in, in the school uh, school kitchens and they made amazing displays. You can imagine the beautiful pictures are on your screen right now, the amazing displays that they made. Um, and really got behind it and really got the kids trying those different vegetables during uh, Veg of the Week. We had lots of support from the horticultural industry. And then most excitingly, we saw lots of kids responding positively, engaging with the veg, having fun with it, and ultimately doing the most important thing, which of course, which is eating it. We did some uh, some, some detailed analysis, which looked at um, whether kids were consuming these vegetables. And what we saw was that uh, if I take carrots, for example, um, we saw that Kids who didn't see the advert or were exposed to the campaigns, about 17% of them repeat, reported eating carrots. But actually, if we look at the group that did get exposed to the campaign, we see that increases to 29%. And we see that pretty much across every single vegetable um, where there's a significant increase in, in claimed consumption by the kids who were exposed to the ad against those who weren't. Right, Sophia, how are you progressing? Because I've got a few slides coming up that would be quite tricky to do without visuals. It's been very slow, this system, uh, but I think in another minute it will be back up. Okay. Um, we did. We commissioned a research company called Charwise who say... Oh, look at that. We're coming to get you, Veg. Mess around. Oh. Okay, so we, we commissioned an agency called Charwise, who, let's see if we're going to get some slides. Okay, I, should I try and drive that? They're all yours, Dan. Apologies, okay, right. everyone, for the, that's right. for now, the slowness I want to... of the system. That's... All right, I'm going to whiz through. I'll show you. So we've, I can't remember what you saw. We saw that, all right? Uh, I hope the videos don't play again because that started the problems. So there you go. That's all the extra media coverage we got that I talked about from all the different other media owners, all of which was donated uh, to us. There's an example of some of the poster sites I talked about. 63 million impacts, 1.7 million pounds worth of, of free advertising we got out of the poster companies. And these are all the supermarkets and just a little taste of the various things they did in store and online and in social. Um, and here are our reward packs. Excellent. Right. I was great through. And here's a little example of the tweets. We're going to, we're able to send this around. This is going to get circulated afterwards, isn't it, Sophia? So people are going to look at more leisure later on. Okay. Let's whiz through to, right. Let's have a look at this survey. So this is the work Childwise did. And they got panels of, of kids and parents and asked them questions about uh, their relationship with vegetables. And what we see is a consistent pattern. So if you look at the first one, it says, I think eating vegetables can be fun. And we see that 39% of kids who didn't get exposed to the campaign agree with that statement, whereas it actually increases to 56% for kids that were exposed to that campaign. And we see that on every single metric. I think eating vegetables can be fun. I like vegetables. I asked to try new vegetables recently. I have eaten more vegetables in the last few weeks. So we see a consistent pattern of increased uh, in terms of 
behavior attitudes amongst those who see the ads, uh, see the ads, but didn't against those who didn't. And what's exciting in this data is we saw a similar pattern with low income families. So we looked at uh, some social economic groupings and we saw that we got a similar shift in attitude and claim behavior in low income families as we did in, in, in other demographics. Now, coming out, there's a full report coming out. Uh, it's literally oh, days away from being finished and then it'll be printed and be in your hands in the next two or three weeks with lots and lots of data on it. But we also you know, to support the Childwise data and the YouGov data, which is all kind of relatively small panel data of about a thousand or so people. We have the data from Kantar World Panel, which is an ongoing uh, uh, panel based data of 30,000 people and what they eat, which goes on the whole time and is really one of the main sources of information for the grocery industry. And that shows that we had we saw a 1.7% increase in veg consumption during by under 16s during the course of the campaign, which is, you know, 1.7 in itself doesn't sound like an awful lot, but actually, it's really quite a significant shift in in in, in veg perception. I mean, first of all, it's positive for a start. Um, Okay, to support that, we went out and purchased all the Nielsen data. So Nielsen data is actually scanned basket data from a large number of supermarkets. It's massive, massive real transaction data. And we employed an econometric analysis data science company who tried to, yeah, they got into all the details to try and weigh up the impact of various different factors on the sales of vegetables, like the vegan movement or the high prices and the shortages of vegetables that existed that time this year. Uh, yeah, they try and factor these factors in, try and isolate the impact of each element. And their conclusion, which is detailed in the report that we'll send round, is that we had a 2.3% positive impact on vegetable sales. So what we've got is we've got lots of different kinds of data, all pointing towards a direction that says, you know, I think we've moved the dial a little bit when we've had a warm response from people. OK, I'm going to start talking about next year. I say there's a full report and I will make sure with Sophia that every one of you gets a full copy of that when it comes out in the course of the next couple of weeks. But it's, it's certainly, I think, very encouraging. OK, let's go on to next year. Uh, so next year, the good news is that ITV have committed to do the same again. Uh, the really exciting news is that we also have similar commitments from Channel 4 and Sky Media. And Sky Media cover all the advertising on pretty much every other channel. So this is pretty much every channel in the UK apart from Disney and Cartoon, e Cartoon, e uh, Cartoon Network sorry, um, will be supporting the campaign, which means have about twice the volume of TV advertising that we had this year when the campaign kicks off in February. It's probably going to kick off around the 17th of February on telly and then kick off properly in, in schools uh, around the 24th of February, which is immediately after half term. And that's when we'll do um, Veg of the Week. The cinema companies have said that they're back in. Some of the poster companies have said that they're back in. Um, we've got eight of the supermarkets back in. So we are looking that it's going to be a much bigger campaign with more channels and hopefully more schools. And um, uh, we'll move the dial on just a little bit further with more veg consumption is, is hopefully where we'll get to. OK. Um, much more central to the campaign coming up is going to be the veg of the week. So we're going to be running the same piece of creative advertising, the same ad that we, which I hope you've all seen, that um, w was a 30 second and 60 second version, the eat them to defeat them ad. But we're creating 10 new, uh, sorry, six new 10 second adverts about particular vegetables. So the 24th of February will be carrot week. And during that week, there will be this little 10 second ad about carrots, which is about challenging kids to eat the carrots. They've all got a strap line. So carrots, are, it's crunch time and peas is you're going down peas. And we're going to really play these strap lines, have these ads running across every single channel and make a really, really big deal of carrots during Carrots Week. The theory being is we've chosen six uh, what we call family friendly vegetables, that are reasonably affordable, accessible and kids like. Uh, and we're going to back those as where I think we can take kids next. As I'm sure you'll know, it isn't the timings aren't particularly great from the point of view of British farming, but we don't have any choice. That's when we can get the free advertising from ITV and others. And therefore, we just have to work with what we've got. OK, hang on. Right. I want to explain to you this diagram. Uh, 
it's quite complicated. Um, and I'm going to see if I can explain it to you in a way uh, that, that shows you the role that schools have in it. So if you look towards the top of the diagram, all the stuff we do on with all the celebrities and the TV advertising and the posters, all that effectively ever does is create an awareness and excitement. That kind of marketing doesn't really actually generate sales. What it does, it gets people interested and in talking about things. But you have to find a way to convert that into actual consumption. The important role that schools have to play is it is our belief that schools are an easier place to get kids to try new vegetables. Because at home, there is an inherent friction that exists in, in all too many homes around the food table but in schools actually if you create the right environment inside the schools then the sort of peer pressure and the group pressure and the collective activity uh sense encourages children to try new things so we want them we want the schools through play and through learning and through sampling to get the kids trying new vegetables and the important thing is then project that back into the home we want the kids coming back from the schools having tried a new vegetable talking about the fact they've tried a new vegetable, wearing a sticker that says they've tried a new vegetable so that the parents and carers back home can pick up on that and say, right, you tried peppers at school. I'll give you peppers again. And we only need to get them to get them to have peppers two or three times and it becomes normal. So it's about drive sampling in schools and then encourage repetition and reward in the home. So there'll be a reward charts again. And then if we just do that two or three times, particularly if it's during that one week, that is how we can normalize activity. Um, okay, supporting that. So how do we best, um, I'll try not, let's pick up your questions at the end. I think we're having a separate question session at the end. Is that right, Sophia? Yes, that's right. I'll, okay, I'm so picking hold, hold up the, the questions, and uh, but please type them. Continue typing them. Okay. We'll address them at the end. And I'm going to ignore them for now. Sorry about that. Um, to support that, we do two other things, which is one is we have this fabulous army of celebrity chefs whose job is to inspire. So the kids have come home, they've tried peppers, and here's some great recipes that you can do at home about peppers to try and take that to the next level. The supermarket support with promotion and price. And let's say the role of social media is to make the parent feel that they're walking a path with others, both in terms of the challenges and the, and the successes that they score along the line. That's how the whole strategies get together, comes together. Right. Um, right. Let's talk about uh, this. This is the Eat Them, Defeat Them School Power Pack, um, which we are going to do to school. So what we've done this year is um, the stuff we did in schools last year was a bit. A uh, bit of this and a bit of that and all a bit last minute. What we did this year is we pulled together a, a group of people who are some outstanding educators, public health leaders, uh, caterers, people from government departments. And we developed, we put them in a room with our creative teams and we workshopped and developed a school strategy that I'm going to explain to you now. Um, okay, so there will be, for every the schools will get a pack and they will get a box that is the same for every school with the right amount of stuff in it, depending on the number of pupils. The first part of that is the bits we have for the kids. So there will be an all new reward chart, which is being designed at the moment. Um, it will, uh, the reward chart is, uh, is going to be much more about getting them to follow these veg of the week and to do, to take down the veg by eating three of them and put their stickers on. And we're going to get those reward charts out there. We're hoping at our most ambition to get into um, uh, 500 kids, maybe 2000 schools is what, that's our kind of our high ambition. Also for the kids, is oh no sorry I've clicked twice okay there's going to be a competition there is a bit of discussion at the moment it's quite what the nature of the competition will be it may well be a a national create your own poster competition i know that abby did a great poster competition up in glasgow which i'm sure she's going to talk about later on we did another one in lambeth i don't think anybody from lambeth is on this but which went really well as well we are between all of us don't tell anybody we are in conversation with bino at the moment about doing a national comic creation competition where the kids are encouraged to make a comic strip about kids defeating veggies with possibly it being picked up by the bino with bino related prizes but that is like at the moment quite an early stage conversation i would quite like to make it a comic competition because i think it would be something new and exciting 
but it'd be one of the two. If we can't make the common competition work, there will be a poster competition and there's going to be cool prizes. Hopefully we're going to have like tickets to things like um, Ant and Dak Deck Saturday Night Takeaway and other cool prize stuff, but we're still working on that. Right? Then for the schools, um, we're going to be putting together some school assembly plans, uh, possibly with a special video. I'm trying to get somebody famous to make a special video that can be played during school assemblies. Um, we'll get some help from people who know how to do these things, you know, teachers, to put together some assembly plans and PowerPoint assets and the other things that teachers need to do a great veg assembly. And we want them to do those. When the, the campaign breaks in schools on the 24th of Feb, which is the day after half term, we want them to do those assemblies that week and there will be a full assembly pack for them. There'll also be these lovely lesson plans. So uh, there's a wonderful caterer down in Hampshire called HC3S who do outstandingly good work in terms of the, the, the contribution they make to the health and well-being of their children. Needless to say, they're owned by the council rather than private. Uh, and they have these wonderful, wonderful lesson plans that they have kindly donated to this project. And we're going to be putting these lesson plans into the hands of, of, of hundreds, if not thousands of teachers across the UK. And the sole purpose of these lesson plans is just about familiarity. It's just, you know, you can learn maths with veggies. You can learn various other numeracy skills and literacy skills with veggies. And it, it just normalises a relationship with vegetables in that child's life. Everything is for Scotland, too, by the way. But we'll come back to that one later on. Um, but we can talk about that separately. Um, we're also going to create, we had some really great success this year with these face masks, there's a couple of photos of, they could live like different flavours and we used them at a few events and a few other things and the kids absolutely loved them. Um, they're quite hard to deploy practically because they need elastic. So I think what we're going to do this year is we're going to create, um, this is for the younger kids, this is for sort of reception KS1, that will create these cutouts so in the box that they'll get for us will be, um, you know, like 50 of each vegetable cut already cut out and they can colour them. The idea is we want the kids to take them home, we want them to decorate the school, cover them in glitter, make them amazing, whatever they want to do. And possibly what we'll, we'll add with that is a little guide for the teachers so that if they want to do more and talk about carrots or maybe get some carrots in and maybe get the kids, kids tasting the carrots in and doing that, there's a bit of their information there to do it. And we've got some great people being with us that we're starting to work more with with the taste ed stuff that B Wilson and Jason O'Rourke are driving. And I hope to infuse some of that into this. So they can just do the coloring and they can make it more of it. Okay. Next thing for schools is going to be a schools competition too. Uh, so some schools just make a bigger effort than others. We saw some schools that absolutely just blew us away with how much they embraced this campaign last year. And we want to encourage that. We want to make them heroes. We want to talk about it and we want to give them cash money as a uh, so they can uh, have desperately need cash to do more stuff. So we will be doing a lot to encourage schools to really get involved and to feedback so we can be, be, be better in, in 2021. Then the final part of the equation when the school is the caterers. We work with quite a few of the caterers. Um, we won... Uh, a nice award from the school catering industry and I'm actually speaking at their big event tomorrow up in Stratford-upon-Avon and we're very keen that caterers are engaged uh, and the kind of things we're going to be asking them to do is one is to set out tasting tables that are about encouraging kids to try the veg ideally quite nice fun attractive tasting tables and we've got a, a caterer who did a brilliant job last year who's going to create a kind of inspiration pack on things that caterers could do that work within the realities of, of catering in a primary school. Then there's these stickers. Um, for each veg of the week, there'll be a, a set of stickers. We want the kids to eat the veg, uh, try the tasting things, get a sticker for giving it a go. And then that sticker hopefully will still be stuck to them by the time they get, get home. And the caterers, I think, will help us do that. Then, then there's also the progress charts. Now, I'm not entirely sure I can promise a progress chart as impressive as this Blue Peter one. Um, but uh, then again, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to see the catering staff in, in, in outfits quite as impressive as these Blue Peter ones. Um, but we are going to have some kind of wall mounted progress chart which goes on the wall at school. So the caterer, the cooks there might set a challenge that says, I don't know, the kids have got to eat a ton of vegetables before the end of term. And they can kind of fill it in as they wish. Um, because what that gives is, is, is 
a sense of collective achievement is a very, very powerful human motivator. It's also very hum- available, powerful in kids. So if we can get those wall charts up on the walls and the school can score a victory through a collective effort, that will be very powerful. The final part for the caterers is what really amazed us was this kind of art that came out of caterers. I'm mean, I, sorry, I've not related it out very well, but the poodle there is, that's a poodle, right, in the middle. It's absolutely amazing. And we saw an incredible swan and just these just stunning pieces of art came out of quite a lot of caterers. And we found out that one of the catering companies had run a competition with the, with the cooks to say who can create the best displays and they gave them prizes. So we want to take that idea national, throw some money into the pot, maybe a thousand, two thousand pounds, something like that and challenge those great school cooks who really care and really go the extra yard to create great things. I'm trying to get them onto G- uh, Good Morning Britain all this morning, but haven't got there yet. But really, let's let's help recognise our caterers as part of this and, and, and acknowledge them as, as heroes is the idea. Right. Uh, but most important slide, how do we pave this? I'm going to take a sip of water if you just pause me for a moment before I dip, in, dip into that. These packs cost us 62 quid, plus the cost of getting them there, um, which is if we pay a commercial service, pushes us up closer towards 80 quid. How do we pay for it? Okay, in the perfect world, we find local corporate funders, ideally from the veg sector, they pay us 95 pounds a school, which covers that cost and gives us a little money to stick in the pot for, for schools where perhaps it might be more challenging to find a sponsor because maybe there's, you know, there's not too many people growing broccoli in the centre of London, for example. Um, to give you an idea, we've already got a, a, a sweet corn farmer in Hampshire. Um, so if anybody from Hampshire is on the line, we should talk to each other. We've got uh, an, uh, same sweet corn farmer wants to go into West Sussex too. We've got a broccoli farmer in Cornwall a pea farmer in Norfolk, um, a leaves farmer in, uh, where are they, um, Cambridge. Uh, we've got somebody else up in Yorkshire. The, we're, we're talking to the growing sector and we are trying to get them to stump up a little bit of money to help towards the cost of putting these packs in schools. Uh, and I hope the more them we can find, the better. Last year, uh, I think I saw um, Lorraine from uh, up in Scotland on the line here. You know, we, we put through MASH Direct funded packs going into Edinburgh and Glasgow, which was great. Uh, a kale farmer funded packs in Lincolnshire, and we're hoping to do more. So in the perfect world, we find corporate funders. That's one part. The second part is that caterers last year, some of them part or fully funded packs in their schools. So companies like Elior, Absolute Catering, and, and some others found some money, and we are out pitching to the catering industry. And as I say, I'm speaking at their their big event tomorrow just try to see if we can get them to get some uh some money in then the local authorities it's a mixed bag we had some local authorities last year who paid for the whole thing we got some who found a little bit of money um we got some who just simply said we just haven't got any money at all but we will try and get it together and then some community groups some of which i think are on this 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 webinar found some money and some various trusts and local organizations and the final part is that we have a pot of cash that we will try and spread as far as possible. So, for example, I've just agreed, and this is a really great model, is the, the, the broccoli farmer in Cornwall is putting up about two and a half grand. Um, I took that to the council and they said, OK, oh, right, we found 750 quid. OK, fine. And I'm going to try and stick another 1500 quid in the pot for my money. And that's going to give us enough in Cornwall to go into 50 schools. And that's the kind of collaborative effort, both in terms of effort and money that we're really looking for to make the campaign go as far as possible. You know what? Even if local authorities say to us they haven't got a penny. You know, last year we had 50 grand come in in the final stage of the campaign. And I put all that into schools in areas that we couldn't previously be able to find a solution for. And we may get some more of that. I, I don't know, but we will, you know, we have to scrabble around to find the money because that's just the reality of the world. Um, okay, that's uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much for, for listening for, to me for so long. It's quite weird sitting in a room on your own talking for that long with nobody saying anything. Um, but thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for Sophia for, for getting us through the slides.
No, thank you, Dan. Uh, it was great. And I hope everyone is feeling excited. I see lots of questions being typed and ideas. So carry on. Um, we will have some time at the end to, to, to talk through them. Uh, but let's hear um, from Abby, who has a great case study of what has been done in Glasgow. Yeah. Oh, that's one slide too many. I'll just go back one. Can everybody hear me all right? Let's just assume that everyone can. Great. <laughs> um, just like Dan said, it is uh, odd sitting in a room by yourself talking to a computer, even though I know there's loads of people here. Um, so hello, everybody. I've never um, presented at a webinar before. I'm used to looking at a sea of faces, which um, is probably uh, less challenging than this. Anyway, here we go. Um, I'm Abby. Um, I'm Glas Glasgow Community Food Network, as the name suggests, is a network organisation. Um, all our members are groups, organisations and projects across the city that are involved in different types of community food work. So community growing, community meals, uh, fruit and veg barrows uh, and community shops, uh, food education of different types, cooking workshops, that kind of thing. Um, we have actual members, it's free to be a member, um, but there's also the kind of wider sector and we aim to be a collective voice for that sector. We have a vision for a, a Glasgow uh, with a food culture that is flourishing, sustainable and fair for all and our mission is to connect and support the people and organisations of Glasgow who grow, produce and eat food, which basically incorporates everybody. Um, so if I click that button, there we go. So, um, Glasgow Community Food Network, in its own right, is a member of Sustainable Food Cities, well, via another body called Glasgow Food Policy Partnership. Um, so we're, we're a signed up member of Sustainable Food Cities, have been for a few years, and um, Sophia's already outlined uh, what that means in practice. Uh, so collectively, we are working towards um, Glasgow City's food plan. We're calling it food plan rather than the food strategy. Uh, those of us that are in Scotland, and there's quite a few on this uh, on this on this webinar, will know that every local authority in, in Scotland has to create um, what's called a food growing strategy. Um, that is uh, a juicy place on all local authorities to um, increase land uh, availability for community growing and allotment provision. So we decided to call our food strategy a food plan to avoid confusion. Um, so that's a big piece of work, procurement, food economy, food inequalities, etc. Uh, we're the community food aspect of that. Um, through us, we uh, through the GCFN, uh, we applied for a five thousand pound grant from Sustainable Food Cities to promote and support our Veg Cities campaign. And again, Sophia's already done a great job of explaining what that was and what that meant in practice. Um, so in, in, in Glasgow, it's basically kind of supporting all the organisations that were already doing stuff and asking them if they could do a little bit more or stick a Veg Cities label on what they're doing. And some of you may have heard about the Chef's Challenge and uh, where we got um, locally grown produce into some high end restaurants and got chefs competing with each other to uh, grow the best, to create the best dish they possibly could. So Veg Power was another easy one to sort of tack on to all, all the activities that was already happening around veg. Um, tapping into the networks and the people that uh, that are already involved in GCFN. Um, so what did we do? We um, obviously, as Dan's, Dan's done a grand job of explaining, um, there was the, the, the national advertising campaign. We had already been thinking through our Veg Cities work that we would do a school's poster competition. So, um, so we kind of linked our poster competition in with the uh, with, with the, the national veg power campaign and we kicked it off basically in this in the same week at, at the same time um, so that um, young people across the city were aware through uh, social media through advertising through all the things that Dan's talked about uh, were, were aware of uh, as a national campaign so when we went into schools and talked about it and promoted it we um, we were able to say we're related to that directly. So the poster competition, as it says here, making the best poster from red vegetables. And I have to say at this point, part of our thinking around this was because as community growers, I've seen a couple of reactions on the chat there, as community growers, people involved in, in, in community food work, um, the eating them to defeat them, kind of taking the veg down, it didn't sit well with us at all. We're like, oh, that's that's not the... Well, people love vegetables, not 
not hate them. So I, it's interesting to see the, the data and statistics and the, the kind of feedback from uh, I think the analysis that's been done to, to kind of see that, that you know, to all intents and purposes, the, um, that, that, uh, that sort of angle seems to have actually worked. But um, we, we love vegetables, <laughs> so we didn't want to make a big thing of, of, uh, of defeating them particularly. Anyway, we, we work quite closely at this point with um, Glasgow City Council Education Services, um, who helped us to uh, to get the message out to all schools um, across the city. Uh, the competition was open in two categories, uh, P4s to P7s, um, that's, that's primary four to primary seven, and S1s to S3, that's the um, first year to third year. Um, I, don't, I can't remember works in England and Wales these days, I've been up here 21 years different but I get the idea so two different age groups two different categories um, and uh, and we ran that competition uh, like I say during the, um, the sort of veg power campaign weeks um, and we so we, we it, education services got the message out for us and they they also got Cordia involved Cordia managed at that point managed uh, all catering in Glasgow schools Museums, libraries, any, anywhere the city council produces it does does food um, was was Cordia's domain. Uh, it's now being dismantled and brought back in, in house to um, catering services, um, which is good because they were a very difficult organisation to work with. Um, but but nonetheless, um, kitchen staff were promoting the, the competition uh, in the in the schools um, in the canteen areas as well. Um, and as Dan said, um, we also. Uh, kind of were a conduit for, for sort of getting the uh, about 20,000 packs, I think it was, to, to primary schools um, across the city at that point. Um, so what did we do? Uh, so we, we, in, 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 in line with the uh, petition, we also we said that the first 10 schools to register would could access the Veg Cities Roadshow. Um, the Veg Cities Roadshow uh, went, um, I guess you, as you can see, we, we had 10 schools involved. Um, the idea was to be with them for an hour and a half. We said we could work with 30 children at a time. Uh, we split that group of 30 into 10 and we had three activities which they rotated around. So we had um, food preparation, wasn't really cooking, we didn't do any actual uh, cooking, but we, we did sort of basic things like hummus and pea dips. Um, so um, for sort of cold food prep, lots of carrot sticks, peppers, um, cucumbers, celery, all sorts of things. Kids absolutely loved that. That's brilliant. So each each set of ten children got involved in the different stage of, of uh, making the food, um, and then everybody ate it at the end, and there was never anything left. It was fantastic. Um, the, uh, the, the the games and activities. So in the, the bottom right hand corner there, there's the, the lovely Susan. She's playing Health Hopper, uh, which I can't remember the website. It's a comic. It's a comic something. Health Comics or something like that. So it's a, a website where you can buy lots and lots of. Um, sort of food and health related resources so we, we bought those along with some along with some stickers as well so that we were able to give all the kids a sticker with a picture of a vegetable on it um once we'd finished so that was a good good fun game quite like ludo uh, and then gardening we did um making pots out of newspaper and sewing peas and, and a little bit of a sort of handout on how to how to eat how to eat your pea your pea shoots so the idea being that they were just growing as pea shoots and not not into full-size peas because obviously space and capacity in classrooms is limited so we did that during the um during the the weeks of the of the um the campaign the veg power campaign um leading up to um the sort of big event which we which i'll come to in a minute um so that was helping to promote the uh, the poster campaign and we use social media a lot uh, throughout the uh, throughout that process um so so the images went off to social media were, were some that you can see here um, and also some cheeky grins from uh, from some kids. Uh, it's all very DIY. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money, so we just kind of worked with what we had. Um, but uh, these photo frames are quite fun and it's amazing how much how much kids really enjoy sticking their heads through a square and, and will have happily have their photo taken. It's brilliant. Um, so some of the images that we received over the weeks, we, we got about... 80 or so, or maybe more, I can't remember, hundreds, hundreds of, of entries uh, across 80 different schools, that's it. Um, with, with, we, we tried to limit it to 20 entries per school just so that we weren't overwhelmed. So we left it with the, uh, the, the class teacher um, to kind of select 
the best from from the en entries from her class or that or his class, uh, and then the, we asked them to send um, send us digital versions. So we didn't want the, the hard copies. This one, as you can see, is it's actually a collage. So, um, uh, but we asked them to send photographs or scanned images. So I'll just just go through these. It's quite fun. This is the first three are from uh, the primary school entries, um, and I've just taken these um, from the final uh, our final. So we shortlisted. Um, about 20 or so from the from the hundreds that we received um and then from that we work with graphic designers to to kind of come up with a, a, a sort of the, the top three and the final one that we thought would translate well into uh, into a visual image um that was uh, due to be uh, plastered across across glasgow in poster form and in bus stops and that kind of thing so we had this and then we had that's quite fun very very good for a primary school age i think um, p7 emma there we go <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. That must be a chocolate bar. Yes, it is. Chasing away. And this was the winner. Batteries break Glasgow. Uh, those that know Glasgow will know that um, Glasgow's slogan is people make Glasgow. And what you can see around the um, the Veggies Make Glasgow uh, slogan is um, some iconic scenes from around the city. So top left, we've got uh, that chap that sits outside Goma Gallery of Modern Art. And he's, he's notoriously got a traffic gun in his head. So he's wearing a carrot. Um, we've got the Finiston Crane with some, um, some vegetables uh, sort of leaping off them. Uh, top right hand corner there, those that's in the, the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery Museum. There's these uh, sort of weird heads hanging from the ceiling. So uh, in this picture, they're all depicted as, as various different types of vegetables. The tall ship there in the bottom with carrots for the for the mouse. You get the idea. So um, that that one that was that was the the winner in the primary selection. Um, then we had the secondary group, less entries from secondary schools, which is. That's fairly normal because they're also busy with um, their own things. Uh, so this was a um, really nice image for, from an art, art class. It's an art teacher that she took this on. Um, and then, just to know what's the next one? That's pretty good. Sort of superpower kind of kind of idea. Uh, veggies being superheroes. That was a strong theme throughout lots of things. Actually, I had one that was a good Avenger, Avengers one. Anyway, here's the um, uh, the winner. Uh, so. Um, this is actually a photograph taken of uh, a, a mixed, but said mixed media. But she actually brought in loads of vegetables into the class, the art class, uh, and she got them all tasting vegetables and making collage faces using um, fruit and veg. And we thought that was just great. And um, so that was the winner in the senior category. Um, what's next? So I've got these slides somewhere else so I can see them. Um, so the winners were all invited to. I did click that. Move on. It's frozen. Um, there, oh, that's that's on too many. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the winners were all invited to an event uh, which we held at a place called Barra's Art and Design. Um, and the Barra's Art and Design is a it's a kind of art center, kind of venue space, um, and. Uh, were invited or the short the, the winners were invited the shortlisted finalists were invited and they were all allowed to bring a bunch of uh, pals with them from school as well so uh, we had about um 100 or so children there um we uh, we had some games and activities badge making was quite good fun um and the band that you can see here are called the barrow band they're a glasgow based uh, outfit and running for, for, for decades i think uh, and they sing uh, interactive educational songs about vegetables. Um, so they have uh, all clues um, to the uh, questions that they ask at the end of the song are in, uh, in in the songs. So things like where do potatoes come from and how do carrots grow and that kind of thing. So, and if the, so the kids are, invite, are, are encouraged to shout out the answers uh, and um, the, the lucky recipients of, um, of the correct answer will receive uh, a carrot or another vegetable. Um, the chap in the left-hand corner there, that's uh, that's Broccoli Bill. Broccoli Bill is Glasgow City Council's um, Education Services Cordia uh, mascot, um, healthy eating mascot. Uh, so the um, the actual winners of the competition are in the next next image. Here they are getting their photos taken with Broccoli Bill and the, uh, the baldy-headed chap is, I can't remember his name, but he's from Clear Channel. Uh, who own a lot of advertising space across the city, and they had agreed to uh, display the, the images in some some bus stops and bus, uh, bus shops across the city. 
where it wasn't eating too much into their advertising revenue because obviously we have no money, um, or very little anyway. Uh, the Barrow Band, um, I should say, we've done the sponsorship uh, kind of angle um, that Dan mentioned earlier. Uh, we managed to get um, Albert Bartlett's potato, com potato company based in Airdrie, and they sponsored the, the Barrow Band appearance because that cost about £800. So that was the, the poster competition, the uh, the school's veg challenge, um, and the, uh, the, the the veg packs that were distributed to the schools all kind of lumped into one big thing. That was probably the biggest thing that we did. The other thing that we did was um, engaging and connecting with organisations around the city through our network that already do food work and asking them if they could do something that kind of ties in with all these themes and ideas. So I'll just go through a few of these. I think I'm okay for time still. Um, not sure, <laughs> but, but um, so one of them was Mugati Foods. Mugati is a, it's got a funny name. Um, it's named after a, a well because a small boy when they were trying to find a name for community foods couldn't say the word community came out as Mugati. So now they're called Mugati Foods, and that's that's stuck ever since. But you have to explain it every time. Um, so uh, we they were uh, working with an organisation called Propagates, um, who are Glasgow-based uh, local foods. Um, health and nutrition growing organization to run um, cooking workshops uh, so we kind of use the veg of the week in each of those it is a 10 week uh, veg power cooking program and the veg of the week is featured in each of those and of course plus over social media and you can see the free aprons we received there I've just been told by Sophia that I have to hurry up so I'll just hurry up Black Hills Growing <laughs> North Glasgow based organisation, they do a lot of youth work, uh, so they incorporated the veg of the week, and um, this seemed to be an easy thing to do actually, using the veg of the week in, in kind of things that people were already doing, such as community meals and cooking workshops. They incorporate veg of the week into their community meal, which is um, prepared by young people uh, every week, and we had uh, North Glasgow Community Food Initiative, um, who have participated in um, uh, in the Sugar Smart campaign, previous to the Veg Cities campaign, um, and uh, they they did a lot of work in schools, as you can see, um, using uh, Penelope Pea Pods, which is a kind of uh, nutrition workshop uh, kind of pack, and a lot of kind of tasters and uh, food workshops in schools um, for the for the Veg Power campaign as well. So, final slide here. Um, so, what do we what do we learn from this? Like I said, we had very little money. Um, we just had a veg cities money, but we were already using that for other things as well. So uh, we have to be pretty creative with the resources that we have. Luckily, there is a big network of grassroots organisations doing fun stuff uh, around food across the city in Glasgow. So we were able to uh, to tap into that. Um, we quite enjoyed um, adding our own local. It was pretty hard work coordinating the poster campaign, but it was worth it um, because people kind of. You know, by the end of it, everyone has seen the adverts on TV, so they felt like they were they were part of something that was a national thing, but creating their own local version of it. Um, and I guess the use of social media is the same as being creative with resources. Uh, that's where a lot of people are at, and it's hard to monitor and hard to measure. But um, but that that's where a lot of people get their information from these days. So we kind of really worked on that side of it because it's it's fairly uh, free and accessible. Uh, and, and and like I said, the um, <laughs> the each one defeat them still doesn't sit well with me. Uh, but if it works, then I guess we could we could learn to embrace it. But looking forward to being involved in this again next year. Thanks. Thank you very much, Abby, for your presentation. And I hope everyone uh, listening to this webinar will will start thinking about how they can embed and use the veg power advertising campaign with what they're already doing around vegetables um, and I hope you you know this has helped you to to start start thinking about that already and moving things forward uh, wherever you are um, so we have uh, about 10 minutes uh, left for questions and answers I'll, I'll try and do this in order of when they were typed and try to group things together. But the first, uh, it's not so much a question, but a comment from Eugenie is, uh, it says, our experience shows just that kids will eat better during gardening club than they would ever at home. And I think uh, Dan talked about this as well in relation to schools. Um, but the, the next, if you want, if, if Abby or, or Dan want to say anything else about this, feel free. But the next question is about links um, that are already being done. So Natasha asks about 
any links made with Food for Life Award in schools and also with uh, veg box schemes that might exist um, in various places around the country? Um, well, let, let me answer that question. Um, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yes, right. very good. Okay. Thank you. We get approached, I know, I must have been approached by three or 400 organisations that wanted to link with us in the last year, and there's three of us working part-time. So uh, it's quite hard for us to support every as much as we would like to. Um, what we are trying, the theory here with Veg Power is we're trying to create a, you know, we're a big tide, and we may be a bad one or a good one, but we're a big tide. And the idea is the tide can help raise all those other organisations' boats, if you like. So we, we say to people, this is going to happen. It's going to be big. Try and work what you're trying to do in around this so it helps to put set uh, wind into your sails. Uh, and it's much harder for us to, more, to do more than that uh, other than, than just hopefully make life, you know, get kids excited about veg and that's going to make it easier for everybody to do the things that they're trying to do. I guess, Ed, can I respond to the Food for Life thing specifically? Yes, yeah. please. So, um, as, as uh, Natasha is probably aware, um, schools, if they're doing a food for life reward, or they, they are meant to set up a school nutrition action group. Um, and, and in Glasgow, that's been really difficult. So the Soil Association are, are, are working quite closely with, um, with education now. Uh, and, and now the cordia has been broken up, um, that's, that's got a lot easier. But up until this point in Glasgow, it's been really, really difficult to get food for life actually happening in schools just because um, those in charge of the catering have been uh, so closed minded and difficult to, to, to negotiate or talk to. Um, so I think I, that's, that's the sort of thing that which power can't do on a on a national level but we can do locally um through through our kind of local level campaign campaign work yeah thank you uh next uh question comment from anthony uh, again um linking up the campaign to to growing um to growing your own food and anthony you mentioned that crop for the shop initiative now i'm not familiar with this but if you want to link to to leave a web link uh for people to know more about this initiative uh please uh drop it in our in the attendee chat box uh the next question is a practical one because i think it has been addressed from it's a question from lorraine how can schools get the packs but i think dan dan has covered well, let this. me answer that actually can i answer that um yeah. individual schools i guess Right, so there will be two or, th in two or three weeks' time, there's going to be a website with information for schools, caterers, local authorities and sponsors, which includes an application form for schools to apply for these packs. Now, ideally, we've already kind of organised things with a sponsor or a local authority and the schools have been told in that way and got on board. But there will be schools who don't. And if they come to say, we haven't got any money, we haven't got any funding, but we'd love to have a pack, we will try our darndest to make sure they get one. And we did, I think we kind of took care of every school that asked last year. And that website will be up two or three weeks from now. And we'd like them to sign up this term for next term. So if you've got schools who are keen, we will try really hard to get packs into those schools. Thank you. The, the next question from Lorraine. Have you involved parent councils or any organisations like that? Now, I'm not sure if this is in the in the creation of the of the concept behind the campaign. Uh, I think you have done this, Dan, uh, last year. Uh, Want to say anything about that? Sure. Okay. So on the campaign concept, controversial, I know. So here's the thing. Um, there's an immense amount of thinking and research went into this campaign concept. And I couldn't explain that to you in the time available today. Um, but if uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, fizz. Can I ask you all to uh, mute your mics unless you're speaking? That might reduce it. Um, oh, there we go. Right. Um, I'm presenting, actually, the rationale behind this at Food Batters Live next week, even if you happen to be there. But if you have an appetite to understand how we ended up in the creative direction that we ended up, then let Sophia know I'd be more than happy to do another webinar to take anybody who's interested through that, because it's really, really important to understand the subtleties of the creative message here and how we got to it and why it works. What was the other part of the question, Sophia? One about the creative approach and... 
I, I, I think that was that was it. Um, okay. So yeah, if you're if you're really interested, let Sophia know. And if, if enough people are interested, I'd be more than happy to to give you guys a run through on on that presentation. But it's too complicated to answer quickly. Yeah, I can also point you in the direction of a similar webinar we did uh, before the 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 advertising campaign kicked off in 2019, uh, where I think Dan, you go into more detail about the creative concept. Yeah. Uh, so I can I can send a link to that one as well. Yeah. We've also published some stuff that we kept quiet at the time, which is kind of the uh, some thinking behind the approach, if you like. Yeah. The next question is from Joe. Oh, hello, Joe. <laughs> we have resources from 2019 that weren't used. Are they okay to use in 2019? <gasps> Joe? <laughs> uh, I'm horrified. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, look, I'd rather than that than they go to landfill. They can only be a good thing, right? I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll end up with some slightly different creative approaches around the same theme this year. But if you're sitting on packs, well, Joe, that's Joe from Middlesbrough, Joe. I see him. Uh, Joe and I, let's you and I pick up on that separately and figure out, let's not, let's not waste them. The, the next one from Anthony, an idea. Here's an idea for everyone. How about a video recipe competition? Ooh, it's a good idea, actually. Um, all those budding YouTubers out there. Yeah, there you go. One yeah, more for you, Dan. But also... I'm, I'm writing that down, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you. And the other comment from uh, idea from, from Anthony is uh, when, when 40K of our 20K schools have a garden or veg patch, why not try to get more growing food? There's another yeah, one. I... I agree. So what we're trying to move towards, this is, this is, you know, we've now, if you like, proved that we have a reason to exist and we now have ambition to exist for a long period of time. And what we hope to complete over the next few years is that at a fixed time every year, it will be veg in schools, in every school in the country. And there will be a program that starts in reception and moves all the way through to year six where at reception, it's, you know, a lot of playing and having fun and kind of sensory taste education type stuff, moving through into growing and preparing food and the gamification of nutrition. We want kids be educated and loving vegetables from reception through to year six. So by the time they leave school, they are absolutely in love with veg. And it is our ambition with the support of all the people like your good selves who help us get it right that in two or three years from now, we have this highly evolved program weaved into effectively the curriculums of every school in the country. That's the goal. We've got a long way to go. And growing will be a really important part of that, but not this year. Nice. Uh, question from Eugenie. Uh, I think it's been, it's clear now that this is for everyone, but the question is, is that for Scotland too? <laughs> Yeah, so um, yes, it is. I've had some conversations with the Scottish government. Unfortunately, I didn't want any money up in the Scottish government. Never mind. Um, we, I very much hope so. It's we want it to be everywhere. The only place we're having a bit of a challenge with at the moment is how we get things translated into Welsh. But yes, definitely, I will be. We have good relationships with people in Glasgow, and in Morsyth, and in Edinburgh, and we would love any introductions anybody can make to local authority folk anywhere so we can get them on board. Yeah, next suggestion from Anthony. We need case studies and videos on the best foodie schools and how, how common barriers have been overcome. Uh, maybe this is something, uh, there's something about this in the evaluation, Dan? Yeah, there's not really much in the way of particular school case studies. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting thought. I mean, um, I mean, we've yeah, seen we've seen difficult. earlier on how uh, some, you know, in your presentation, how some schools really took this on board and were super creative and dynamic, promoting uh, the veg of the week, for example. Uh, I've heard from from schools and school caterers who had uh, during the veg of the week they had extra portions of that veg. Mm. Um, so there's certainly good case studies out there. Yeah. So what we did do is because. Um, we identified a few uh, organisations who made an outstanding effort last year, this year, and we invited those people to, into our 
what is now our kind of school's consultative committee. So Jason O'Rourke is the head of Washington Academy. He does incredible things. He's in that group, as are a few others. And if, if we can find people doing great work, we are very keen to try and get them all around the table and sharing ideas. And, and you know, what Veg Power has the ability to do is to take an idea developed in one school and to put it into thousands of schools very quickly. And, and we, we hope we can be a, a, a vehicle for doing that. Next comment from Eugenie is about corn. So here's an idea for another corporate sponsor. Corn has done some cooking with our local school. Okay, so I mean, our policy is we only support uh, the the consumption of fresh, frozen, or tinned real vegetables, uh, and I think we'll probably be sticking to that policy. And although we don't have an issue with corn, we wouldn't particularly go out to promote it. We want people eating veg rather than being, you know, we're not a vegetarian agenda. And we would be slightly nervous of anything that made us look like a vegetarian agenda. Real, real food. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hope never from corns on board, but um, it's that is, it's not what something that we particularly want to support. And that's pretty much the position uh, in our Veg Cities campaign as well. Um, it's all about promoting seasonal, locally grown vegetables yeah. and more vegetables. We're just not eating enough vegetables as a nation. We, we are very, very concerned about the march of highly processed vegan goop stealing the agenda when it comes to healthy eating. We, uh, we're really quite worried about it. And we need to work very hard to encourage people to eat proper fresh vegetables or frozen. Uh, next question from Lorraine. This, I think this has been addressed, is about the timing. When will PACs be ready? Uh, I can give so you more on that, actually. Okay, so we are gonna, we're trying really hard to have a zero waste policy um, this year. So we are hoping to get everybody signed up, schools, funders, local authorities, by Christmas. Uh, we will then print only as much as we need. Uh, and those will go out and they the idea is that they will arrive in school in the week before half term. Half term is slightly different in Wales. It's a little bit earlier, I think. Uh, and so they've got it all there set ready to kick off when they return from half term on Monday, the 24th of Feb. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, OK, next next one up was about the concept which has been addressed. Uh, Eugenie, we need to link up. We are in Rutherglen. There you go. Uh, Dan's, Dan's um, contact is in the presentation, so uh, I encourage you to, to get in touch directly. And link I think up. That, that was directed at myself, actually. That comment was directed at, at me, Abby. Oh, OK. Excellent. Because it, it was at the end of my presentation, and obviously I'm like, rather than borders Glasgow, but it's in South Lanarkshire. Hello, Eugenie, we should talk. <laughs> and also, hello, Helen, who's um, also South Lanarkshire and is on this. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Please do these links. Um, and next, here we go. A question from Sidoni, I think. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing the name uh, correctly. Can you tell us which eight supermarkets are on board for the 2020 campaign? Yeah, I can. Um, but don't repeat this just yet. Um, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Aldi, Lidl, Asda, Co-op, Ocado, and not yet 100% confirmed is Morrison's. So that gives us about 85 to 90 percent market share. Um, we've had a no from Waitrose and M&S, which we're working on, uh, but I'm not too bothered by because they're not particularly too important as far as this issue is concerned. But I like their money. Uh, we've had a no from Iceland, which I'm going to work try quite hard to fix. So those, those are the supermarkets who are supporting us this year. But that hasn't been announced publicly yet, so please don't spread that any further. And Birdseye as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've, we're past the, the time we said we would finish this webinar, so thank you for those that stuck with us. There's lots of good um, suggestions, ideas, um, mention of, of projects. Um, if you want to leave web links, uh, please do use the, the chat function, and I can circulate those to, to all the participants. 
so this will brings us to to the end of the webinar. Uh, thank you very much to to those um, that participated. A big big thank you to Dan Parker and Abby Morden, our wonderful presenters, um, for uh, for presenting today. Um, and uh, you will receive the recording and the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much. I'll leave the, the attendee chat function on uh, for a few more minutes if you want to continue sharing. Um, but thank you very much. And can, I, can I just add, I, a lot of you know me already or you can get my details off, uh, Sophia. Do send me any more questions you have uh, or any thoughts, ideas, opinions, criticisms, everything. Uh, I'm, I'd be very glad to hear from you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Sophia, for organizing and bringing us all together. Yeah, and apologies for the technical uh, <laughs> issues uh, earlier on. Uh, but I'm so glad you stayed uh, through that. Thank you. Bye.